So the really cool thing, mm -hmm. the really cool thing is you can retrain the immune system mm -hmm. and you can seal leaky gut so that you can have these foods back as long as you, you know, Moderation, take, take yeah. some precautions. Yeah. Um, okay, so what would be some of the alternative foods that we could eat and consume if we got rid of all these? Because it sounds to me I'm just eating broccoli and cauliflower all day. No, no, no. So, so what are some so, of the alternatives that are also... I, I mean, there food? are great pastas out there made out of cassava flour. Mm -hmm. I make one at Gundry MD made out of sorghum flour. Okay. Uh, again, have no relationship. Jovial makes phenomenal pastas out of cassava flour. Cassava flour. Cassava. Yeah, it's uh, like taro root. Oh. And I tell you, I actually, one of the restaurants, uh, Italian restaurants in Montecito, keeps, you know, cassava pasta for me, and I just had a big bowl of penne pasta a couple of nights ago. And it doesn't affect your, you don't no. feel like this. No. This, and it's got you the know, mouth. gluten hangover. No. And, and it's got this mouth feel. Uh, it, it, it's really good now. It's, you know, al dente. So the idea that you have to, you know, suffer these things is is old school. And I think one of the, one of the big benefits of the plant paradox being so popular is that consumers wanted alternatives mm -hmm. and companies rise to the occasion right, started making and stuff. they're making lots of stuff okay. there's lots of now pasta sauces peeled and de-seeded tomatoes you know again there's lots of pressure cooked beans so um it's actually it's been exciting to watch um these things come about right what about, uh, so what other foods? We've got the cassava flour pasta. What about, I mean? So there's actually increasingly now a lot of fairly safe ice creams out there that uh, can use uh, alternative like coconut milk as an example. Mm -hmm. There's actually some ice creams that use a sweetener called allulose, which I'm very high on. Allulose. Allulose, allulose is a, a rare, actual sugar. It was first discovered in figs, but it has uh, no caloric value. And they actually, it's primarily produced from corn, but mm -hmm. before everybody has a fit, by GMO uh, allulose. Um, most corn in the United States is genetically modified, and that's a whole nother story in, in itself. Most corn in the United States is sprayed with Roundup, mm -hmm. as is all our wheat, as is all of our everything. Yeah. Um, so, but allulose is actually a prebiotic. So a prebiotic is fiber that feeds good gut bacteria. So get non-GMO allulose? allulose, and it's easy to find. It's on the internet. A lot of stores are getting it, uh, but it's starting to appear in uh, starting to appear in bars. It's starting to appear in ice creams, and mm -hmm. so protein bars and stuff. Like yeah. That. yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other? What about for like the the nuts? What's a replacement for nuts? That we so have? number one nut. And we'll talk about this in a little bit. Is pistachios? I love pistachios. Pistachios have so many crazy health benefits, and their number one health benefit. Uh, spoiler alert: is they are the highest source of melatonin of any food. Really, really. And everybody says, "Well, wait a minute. I don't want to go to sleep after I eat pistachios." It turns out that melatonin is only one of two actual antioxidants mm. that are used in mitochondria to protect mitochondria. The other one is glutathione. Uh, all the other antioxidants that people talk about, you know, vitamin C, vitamin E, blah, 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 have absolutely no effect on oxidative mm. stress in mitochondria. There's only two melatonin and uh, glutathione. Okay. So mel melatonin is not a sleep hormone. Melatonin has a much higher purpose, and that is to actually repair mitochondria mm. to 
uncouple mitochondria. And gotcha. We'll, we'll, we'll get go into that, that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so pistachios is pistachios the, the number nut. one. Can you, have too many, great? can you have too many nuts uh, of pistachio you, and macadamia? You can't. So if you want to gain weight, macadamia nuts are the way to do it. And mm -hmm. I've actually had some weight gaining challenges for some of my really skinny people. And if you want to gain weight, macadamia nuts are the way to do it. Mac, what about pistachios? Pistachios is pretty hard. Macadamia pretty nuts hard. are so good. Oh, I know. That's part of the problem. That's why, that's <laughs> that's why you problem. gain weight. Yeah, you really do gain weight with macadamia nuts. Oh, so you can have more pistachios. And walnuts are great. Yeah. Hazelnuts are great. Mm -hmm. uh, pine nuts are great. Okay. Yeah. So uh, pecans do have a lectin I wrote about in the Plant Paradox cookbook that we often see on food sensitivity tests. Yes. Pecans. Pecans. But, you know, I, I just tell tell people to go easy because, you know, I went to medical school in Georgia and it's the state, you know, nut. Yes. You know, help, help the economy. <laughs> what do you think is the best diet or food eating plan to go on to help you reverse age? Um, believe it or not, my keto, my new keto program. Really? Yeah. To Absolutely. help you reverse, to reverse, to, reverse wow. age. Why do you think that? What's the difference between that and the, the plant paradox diet? So this is the plant paradox taken to its kind of ultimate conclusion. You know, I, I, the plant paradox had a ketogenic program, mm -hmm. uh, but people were shocked with the amount of carbohydrates that were available to them in my ketogenic program. And nobody could quite figure out why but it was really effective, particularly at losing weight. And I didn't even realize why until uh, I was writing The Energy Paradox. And then it was like, oh my gosh, why this works has been sitting here in plain sight. And I didn't see it. And no keto expert has ever seen it because we've all been kind of led down the garden path that ketones and being in ketosis is you know it's a miracle fuel mm, and burns fat burn, yeah burns fat and makes you an efficient fat burner and right. let's look at it this way if you become an efficient fat burner which is what every keto says that you will be efficiency means you get more out of something, uh, you get more efficiency. In other words, if you want to save gas, you buy a Toyota Prius, which mm -hmm. is very efficient at getting the most miles mm -hmm. out of a gallon of gas. On the other hand, if you want to be fuel inefficient, then you buy a Ferrari, mm -hmm. which is really good at wasting gas. Mm -hmm. Now, there might be other reasons to have a Ferrari rather than a Prius, right, but right, we right, won't go yeah. there. So, Fat has nine grams, nine calories per gram. Amino acids and carbohydrates have four calories per gram. So fat has more than twice the calories by weight of carbohydrates or proteins. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you become an efficient fat burner and you're eating fat, then you ought to gain weight. Because Why don't people gain weight? Believe it or not, a ton <clears throat> of people gain weight on ketogenic diets. Why is that? Because they're actually eating the wrong kinds of fats. And mm. the book shows why eating the wrong kind of fats do, do this. You get most people eating a high saturated fat diet, you know, cream cheese and bacon, actually become insulin resistant. And insulin, is, and they actually develop high blood sugar. Mm. And that insulin goes up, and insulin is actually the fat storage hormone. So when you're eating a lot of fat, you actually can get fatter and fatter. Huh. And I, I profile a patient of mine who I call Miranda in the book, who had been doing a true uh, supervised ketogenic diet for two years, and she had gained 30 pounds in two years really? and was really pissed. And she's like, all the experts say that you're supposed to follow this. Yeah. And I mean, she was doing it. She showed me her food diaries. And yet when we measured her, she was insulin resistant. She had high insulin levels. She was pre-diabetic. 
Mm. And she, I mean, she was apoplectic, and she said, literally, she said, what are, you, "What are you talking about? You know, I'm a saint on this diet." I said, "Yeah, this is you know what we see. That's why 60 percent of people who try a ketogenic diet give it up quickly because they don't see the results that are promised." Mm. And it's clear after I wrote "Unlocking the Keto Code" why people aren't getting the results that were promised because... What are people doing wrong on the old way of doing the keto diet and how should they approach it now with the new information? So one of the big problems is that, uh, and this is shocking information, you look at normal weight individuals in the United States, 50% of normal weight individuals are metabolically inflexible. And I've used those terms before, but let's, let's define it again. Okay, what is that? Normally, you and I uh, can burn glucose to make ATP in our mitochondria. But we can also, if glucose runs out, burn free fatty acids, fat, as a fuel. And normally, the second glucose runs out, we should be able to switch over to burning fat as a fuel, just very much like a hybrid car. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're running on gasoline, the battery, which we'll call fat, is being charged. When the gasoline runs out, the battery can discharge and power the vehicle. 50% of normal weight people are metabolically inflexible. They can't do that. They can't switch on they to burning switch. fat. They can't switch to burning <clears throat> fat. Interesting. Now you look at overweight people, 88% of overweight people are metabolically inflexible. They cannot switch over to burning fat. So when, how do you switch over then? And get this, 98.5% of obese people are metabolically inflexible. They cannot make the switch. Is that meaning they can't make the switch on a day-to-day -day basis? <clears throat> on a 24-hour basis. They can't switch and burn. They can't. But if you but intermittent fast for a couple days. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been reading up? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it, it turns out that when, when we have, and metabolically inflexible people have normally high insulin levels. Okay. Simplistically, insulin is a fat storage hormone. Yes. That's why back in the old days when we gave people insulin who were diabetics, they got fatter and fatter because we were injecting them with the hormone that stores fat. So when we eat, insulin comes up, insulin knocks on your muscle cells and says, hey, you know, Lewis just had a great meal. Here, I wanna sell you this stuff, open the door. And your muscles say, oh yeah, yeah good, I'm hungry, give mm -hmm. it to me. So you're, you're insulin sensitive. Now, unfortunately, most people, insulin levels are high almost all the time because your muscles are full. They don't want anything to eat. They go, go away, don't come back. But insulin keeps trying, so it keeps pushing. When insulin is high, it has a second effect. It blocks the release of fat from fat cells. Okay. Now think about it. If you and I just killed a bison and we were gorging on bison, we would want to store mm -hmm. most of what we ate as fat because yes. probably we weren't going to kill, kill the bison for a while. So insulin, when it's high, is storing fat. But insulin, you wouldn't want to burn fat while you're doing that. So insulin says, no, 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 it's staying here in the storage tanks. So there was a very good purpose for that. But normally, if you and I stopped eating, uh, after about eight hours, your blood sugar levels would pretty much be used up, insulin would fall, and then fat would come rolling out of your fat cells, mm -hmm. out of your hybrid battery, and you'd start burning fat as a fuel. And everything's fine. But if you go on a ketogenic diet when you're metabolically inflexible and all you're eating is fat, what happens then? You don't. You can't get to that fat, and yeah. you crash and burn. Mm. And that gives you the keto blue, the keto flu, the Atkins blues. Your athletic performance 
plummet. Your energy goes down. Your energy goes down. You get that headachey feeling. And you say, "Give me some carbs." Yeah. And <laughs> Give me some yeah, carbs. yeah. Because and your brain's going, "What the heck?" You know, I got nothing here. I got nothing. And that's what's really cool. So normally, all of your cells, all of my cells, uh, are delighted to burn free fatty acids. It's a great fuel. The problem is free fatty acids are actually big molecules mm. and they can't get through the blood brain barrier. It, okay. They're too big. So that's a problem. Everybody else in you can do fine, but if your, your brain can't burn free fatty acids because they can't get there, it could do it if they could get there. So we have this clever system that when free fatty acids are outflowing, some of them go to the liver and the liver converts them into water soluble short chain fatty acids called ketones mm -hmm. or ketone bodies. The liver can't use ketone bodies so it throws them out into the bloodstream and ketone bodies can get past the blood brain barrier. So they can serve as a backup fuel for the brain mm -hmm during the time you're sleeping, during the time you're starving, or during the time you're eating a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. But everybody got the idea, uh, thanks to some research uh, out of Harvard and the NIH years ago by Cahill and Veach, that because ketones could provide an alternative fuel, mm -hmm. that it must be a super fuel, right. and that we should always try to be starving. In and fact, get into ketosis, right? Yeah, the get key. into ketosis, get into ketosis. Well, uh, one of the protégés of Dr. Cahill, Dr. Owens, um, in 2004, just you know, fairly recently, showed that even at a full ketogenic output, a full ketogenic diet, only 30% of our power could come from ketones. 70% mm. still had to come from free fatty acids and glucose. And even at full ketosis, your brain still has to have 30 to 40% of its energy met by glucose, mm. not ketones. If you found this video helpful, I think you're going to love this one. One avocado a day is shown in human clinical trials to make you lose weight. Part of the reason is that avocados have a lot of fiber that your gut buddies love and they'll take care of you.